Yesterday was the 105th anniversary of this film's premiere, and what 105 years it's been. Hey, I'm Amy, and welcome or welcome back, and today I will be checking D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation off the 1001 Movie Checklist. If you do not know what the 1001 Movie Checklist or 1001 Movie Challenge is, it is basically a challenge I've given myself to check every single film out of the 1001 movies you must see before you die book. So far, I've checked off 191 films. If you want to know more, you can check out a playlist of everything I've checked off so far and an intro video up there. This episode of the 1000 Movie Challenge is produced by one of my lovely patrons, Aaron M. Day. If you would like to learn how to become a producer, for the 1001 movie challenge or just become a patron, you can check out the links in the description below. As always, let's get started with a short summary. The Northern Stoneman family finds its friendship with the Southern Camerons while fighting in opposite armies during the American Civil War. The development of the war in their lives plays through Lincoln's assassination and the birth of the Ku Klux Klan. My initial thought before watching this film was that it's 3 hours and 15 minutes long and because it is a silent film, there is not a lot of talking, it is mostly action, and you have to follow along with body language and read title cards. So after about an hour and like 20 minutes, it got super tedious and hard for me to watch because some of the battle sequences extended for long periods of time. So I ended up watching it on two times speed, which I know a lot of people are gonna be like, you're not appreciating it and experiencing it at the pace that D.W. Griffith intended it to be experienced at. But also, it's a silent film. It's not like I have to sit there and listen for dialogue. And because it's a silent film, I feel like is done a slightly slower. Everything felt normal paced when I watched it at two times speed. I just got through it a little bit faster. I did have to rewind it maybe once to read a card fully because it wasn't on screen for long enough, but that's really like the only issue that I had. I felt like I comprehended everything for the most part fairly easily because it just was going at a normal pace. I don't know. It if you do watch this and you don't want to sit for three hours and 15 minutes, watch it at two times speed if you can because it's a lot easier to watch and you still get everything because it really is just about watching the body language of the characters. And also without even realizing it, I'm combining two of my last two 1001 challenge episodes with Lincoln and the assassination and then the blackface issue that I talked about in swing time last episode. So I didn't do that on purpose. And in talking about the blackface from swing time, Birth of a Nation is one of the most notoriously racist films in cinema history, in American history. I found it kind of interesting and funny at the same time that this film put title cards at the beginning and a midpoint in the film apologizing for showing the evils of wrong and that it was for the sake of art. But there are so many points in this film, like I'm not even going to touch on the blackface stuff since I talked about that already in last week's episode. If you want to watch that, you can check it out up there. There are so many different points of racism in this, and it seems like it is citing a little bit more with the southern side of the Civil War because it is based on a play that is about the birth of the Ku Klux Klan and the rising up of the South, and that does focus a little bit more, I believe, on that. D.W. Griffith, supposedly in the making of this, was very impartial and did not really care about the racist aspects of it. He just wanted to make a film showing this historical documentation. I don't know if that is what I'm trying to say, but there are so many different scenes of racism in here that I was just like, okay. Like portraying the black soldiers as ruffians and then the Confederate soldiers come in and save the families and save the day. In the title cards, there is the use of derogatory terms like Negro and Mulatto. And there's even a title card that states that the KKK is what saved the South from black rule. And a black soldier is portrayed as a monster and hanged for chasing after a young white girl because he wants to marry her and then she ends up running off of a cliff and dies. And all of these racism and KKK propaganda E things that are in this film make a lot of people forget about the reason that this film is as 
revered as it is, people think that it's a big film in film history because of its racism and the statement that it makes and how long it is. But that's only a small factor in the fact that this is the first huge historical epic that was ever filmed. And D.W. Griffith in this film used the beginning of so many modern filmmaking techniques, things like close-ups, tracking shots, and other camera movements that we take for granted today. And also he modernized the use of editing techniques in this like cross-cutting and parallel storylines. It also includes the first orchestral score. <laughs> But because these techniques were still in their infancy of use, like literally this film birthed a lot of these techniques, the film was hard to follow because they the techniques weren't so laid down in how they should be used. The parallel storylines and parallel action is what really threw me off when watching this. There's this scene at the beginning when they're introducing a lot of the family members from each family and at one point they're introducing the son and he goes up to this woman in a carriage and then they cut to introducing his sister or somebody else. Then they cut back to the man and the woman at the carriage. It felt like she was the woman that they were talking Talking about that was his sister and that's a whole other thing where I got a little bit confused on which characters were which because they weren't introduced exactly properly maybe maybe that was me this is before I started watching it at two times speed there's only occasional dialogue cards so you really have to pay attention to the body language but the thing that really got me and like was what made me want to start watching this at two times speed was all of these Civil War battle sequences. They went on for so long, they could have been cut because you get very quickly how terrible the battles were. They could just show some of the fighting and then some of the bodies and I would have been totally cool with that. I would have been like, okay, I've seen it, I get it, but they showed fight sequences going on for minutes, like 10 minutes I feel like some of these went on. Probably not, but it felt like it because I was daunted with the 3 hour and 15 minute timeline on this. I will give it some leniency since it is the infancy of cutting and editing. They did not quite know the beats and the pacing structure yet. But that is all I got, it's time for the clip, and it's a very very short one, but it is one of the most iconic iconic scenes. Whenever you think of the birth of a nation, you think of this scene. That is all I have for Birth of the Nation. As always, these are just my opinions, but I love to know yours in the comments down below. Let me know what your favorite historical epic is. Do you know which films I have watched so far or just film my progress along in general? There is a link to a Google Doc in the description down below with every single film I've checked off so far, or you can check my letterbox. I'm also an Amazon affiliate, so if you'd like to start the challenge for yourself, watch the movie I talked about today, or watch the movie I'm going to be talking about next time, you can check the links in the description. If you purchase a thing from those links, I will get a small percentage that'll help make this channel even better. For the film I'm going to be checking off next time. I really could not figure out what I wanted to do, but a friend of mine had lent me his Rashomon Blu-ray, so I was like, you know what? Might as well check off Akira Kurosawa's Rashomon. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, truly do appreciate you. Whoever you are, let me know here in the comments down below, and let's be friends. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe if you're new, because I love talking about movies, TV shows, filmmaking, mystery, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye!